Hello, it's Scott Manley here and we are continuing our reusable space program and now it is time to deploy the planetologist. Well, I would say geologist, but geo actually refers specifically to the planet Earth. So these guys will be carbologists, uh, except they're actually going to be experts on the moon, so they'll be moonologists. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What we've got here is we're launching some hardware that we want to bring to the surface of the moon. We have a small habitat that will fit four kerbals and a large rover which contains all sorts of useful sensor equipment and, uh, you know, springy suspension so they can joyride around. And look, we now have three spacecraft on this uh, space station here. I mean, the, the space station really is living up to its uh, its uh, reputation as a nexus, a place for play people to come. It's a port of call, home away from home for diplomats, hustlers, entrepreneurs, and wanderers. Uh, no, wait, that's Babylon 5, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll just send that uh, spacecraft back to the surface. Again, uh, one thing to note is this is the new version of the, the descent or the launch stage. You see that I've got rid of this... Um, the group of 24 little tanks and replaced it with one big ass RCS tank and uh, that makes it a little lighter, stronger and gives us more fuel uh, although it doesn't make my ability to land on target any better but regardless uh, it does survive the landing and at some point I will bring forth my uh, recovery system which uh, I think is going to involve the airships plug-in. Anyway, as I said, we have seven new crew here and we're going to shift them around between the varying spacecraft. We need two on the station to replace uh, Bill, and, or sorry, Bob and Bobfred. We are going to take the Jebediah and Bill off the, the moon shuttle and move them back to the planet. And uh, then we're going to have to have, well, a couple of guys will ultimately end up inside the the. Uh, moon gear inside the cart, inside the rover. The rover, that's what they call it. But uh, they're not going to transfer in that right now. The rover is going to be powered down until it is actually deployed on the moon. So yeah, it takes a bit of while to coordinate this movement. There's a, a whole lot of people to move around. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's, what, seven on there plus four on the station. So that's, a, <laughs> that's 11 different EVAs I have to do. And as you can imagine, this takes a little bit of time and effort. But, uh, you know, this is what's needed to run a successful space program. It's all the little things that matter. You know, those checklists, making sure that everybody's there, not forgetting people on the moon. Uh, you know, forgetting little things can be really bad. If you know the um, Apollo, not Apollo, the, the Apollo Soyuz dock up, uh, when they were returning to the planet uh, on re-entry, somewhere along the line, somebody forgot to close the RCS fuel valves and they the fuel ended up coming back into the cabin air supply and uh, asphyxiating, or no, they didn't actually kill them, but it, it, it's pretty poisonous stuff, this uh, dinitrogen tetra, tetroxide or whatever. Uh, and that really caused, caused the crew to feel sick and actually caused one of the guys to pass out. It was not good. They were hospitalized for a couple of weeks. So, you know, checklists are very good. And uh, making sure that everything happens right, that's, uh, that's all part of flying a successful space program. Anyway, yes, we've moved everyone back. Billy Bob Fred Kerman and Bob Kerman, they are on their way home uh, with uh, Bill with, and Jebediah Kerman in the crew tank. We're just going to use the standard RCS deorbit procedure. Looks pretty good here. Let's... Uh, Let's flip this around and take a look at the space station. Yeah, you can see it there. Watch is going to disappear. Yeah, two, two and a half kilometers out. You cannot see it beyond that. No matter how big your object is, it cannot be bigger than two and a half kilometers, which is why I cannot build a space elevator in this. Well, that's actually one of many, many reasons why you can't build a space elevator in this, because none of the materials that are supplied are strong enough either. And to build a space elevator would need about a million parts and given that it takes about five seconds to add a part uh, that would take several weeks to build that rocket of course I could just hack the dot craft file and watch my computer fall over but anyway those guys are returned we are now gonna get ourselves on the way to the moon and we're gonna carry everything using the moon shuttle now the moon shuttle does not have a great deal of fuel but it has more than enough to act as a ferry in this case so we're gonna just slide it across there and hook onto the bottom of this little habitat. Uh, the habitat has a docking node and so does the, 
space uh, space rover. The rover, however, I want to leave that one free at the top because it's well, you'll see once we get there. We want to make sure we do this in the right order because it avoids a certain degree of musical chairs with the docking nodes. Um, so yeah, just bringing that down there. You can see that the, the habitat is just a crew tank with some uh, bits and pieces attached. Once it's detached, I can't actually activate everything, but uh, you'll see how we do that when we actually deploy it to the surface. First thing to go down will be the rover because the rover is going to actually have to find the site for the the thing. So that's us working on dock, and also I've realized that we have a spare little space tug here, because there's one on the, the back of the RCS fuel tank there. So we're going to take this little space um, space tug and shift it out to the moon. We're going to carry it out there, because, you know, having a space tug around might actually be useful for some things. The It's getting pretty crowded. We only have two docking nodes, and there always seems to be something on it. So I think at some point I'm going to be rolling out another... Uh, another adapter out to the moon. So that's us! Yes, now let us point ourselves along the orbit and get ourselves prepared for our burn to the moon. Uh, again, we have this uh, nuclear rocket, so it is going to be providing very high efficiency thrust, but it's going to be very slow. Oh, nice view of the planet from the moon here, from the, the cockpit here. But that's us, we'll now heading out towards the moon. The moon has not risen yet, but this thing accelerates very, very slowly, so I'm actually starting extra early. And there we go, there's the moon. So we're just going to continue following the uh, following the prograde vector as we come up, build up speed, get that extra 900 meters per second that it takes to get a moon encounter. And you can also see the all the solar panels are all deployed. One of the problems with this design that uh, would not work in reality is that the RCS system sits right next to those solar panels. So um, if I did that in reality, the RCS system would blow off the solar panels. That would be a rather unfortunate design oversight. Uh, the devs have confirmed they are not going to add that feature. They don't want to cause RCS to break things just yet. Or at least if they do, it's a very low priority. There, look at us coming in, and now we're going to do a whole bit of orbital ballet as we try to get ourselves into an encounter with the moon station. The moon station is now renamed to Artemis, which I believe is the Greek goddess of the moon. Uh, she was also famous for having like a bow and uh, I think she might have took a pot shot at Orion at one point or or perhaps Orion tried to impress her. I, I forget exactly. The thing about Orion is that Orion is such a huge constellation in the sky that so many cultures actually have their own stories of it. So uh, it's it's kind of interesting to look at all the different variations of the story with, with different versions of the gods. Uh, but I like the one where Orion ultimately gets uh, stung to death by a scorpion and they, they decide to stick a scorpion, the scorpion, in the sky opposite him to kind of remind the world of the great service the scorpion did to... Uh, the world by saving it from Orion, who was going to hunt all the animals off the planet to show off to girls, as I understand. Of course, those girls were, in fact, goddesses, literally. But uh, <laughs> it's it, depending on which one it is, it's either Diana or, or Latona, Artemis. There's there's various versions of the story. You should go look it up. It's kind of, again, Greek mythology, awesome stuff. Or Roman mythology, just as awesome. Anyway, we're now coming in. That is a nice-looking crater there with a canyon next to it, huh? And uh, bringing up MechJeb's rendezvous module so I can get more feedback. You see me bringing my approach distance down. There it is, down between me and the planet. The approach distance uh, is 1.3 kilometers, and I'm just going to start adjusting that down. What I'm basically doing is kind of burning off-center so that my approach distance drops and my velocity drops. And there we come in very close. We're going to dock on the night side and on the dark side. This is going to be entirely in the hands of Newmond Kerman and Algar Kerman, who uh, I hope they've done their training because they are going to be out of sight of mission control and uh, on the dark side. So they're going to have to be, uh, I don't know, using all their instrumentation best they can. Get rid of the, the rendezvous window now that I've got myself in close. Now, what we're going to try and do 
is we're actually we've got a bunch of things going on here we have a lot of cargo and we don't want it all attached in the the same order first of all we're going to get rid of this little uh little tug it's going to sit out there meanwhile we're going to bring the rover in and we're going to dock it to the bottom of the lander because the lander is going to be dropping it onto the surface and we have to be kind of careful because there's these big nuclear thrusters here and we don't want to break those by hitting them too hard so I kind of there's a couple of false approaches here and uh but we eventually get it fortunately the ladder doesn't stop the docking from happening that's um doesn't have a collision mesh meanwhile we're gonna we've got that now we're gonna drop the little uh oh uh, we're gonna try and put it on there except it's being driven by s well nobody that might explain why i'm gonna draw dock it to the opposite end of the artemis station just uh for future use there we go, and switch the orientation of the station back again, because this thing does not want to stay straight. And we will now detach the detach the spacecraft and the habitat, and we'll swing it around the other side, and that will leave the lander all ready to go to the surface and drop drop the rover on the surface. Uh, Got to be careful here. Um, it was a little close for a while. I thought I might hit those solar panels, but just little bit of maneuvering, bring it around, get us docked, get us docked, get us on to the station. It's it's uh, a lot harder to fly this one when you've removed the... There's no RCS on, on either of these modules that we're dropping on the surface, so the spacecraft is a kind of off-center. There we go, and now it's time to do some more musical chairs with the pilots. So we have we have five crew in this. We're gonna have a few of them. We're gonna go into the the lander. Some of them are gonna stay on the space tug, and one of them has to fly the. Well, some of them have to drive the rover. So we're gonna switch these guys around here, and just of course take a quick visual inspection after its long journey through space. Not that there's anything that they can do about it at this point. But it would suck to kind of land on the surface and then find out you had a flat tire, huh? Um, not that most spacecraft actually use pneumatic tires. Pneumatic tires are something that we use on Earth, but not... I don't think they're, they're used on any uh, space rover. They tend to use mechanical springy tires. They're like metal springs because they don't get punctured. There we go. And we're just going to speed this through. He's going to fly the space probe and we're the space lander we're going to refuel that and this is us we're ready to go to the surface and what we want to do is put this down as near to a keythane deposit as possible now one thing i've noticed is that the spacecraft and the lander the, the rover and the, the lander are back to front so i uh foolishly decide oh i'll just disconnect these and turn them around Ah, oh, no i won't uh, <laughs> I knocked it, and now I have to redock this whole thing. Fortunately, this does have internal gyroscopes, so I can adjust it. And we uh, come back in very carefully. We should probably get rid of that ladder, right? The ladder is not really going to be needed. We're, we're not even going to land the lander, so to speak. We're just going to fly in, drop this on the surface, and then fly away. We're going to do, like, the whole aliens dropship thing, because, you know... That's kind of cool, isn't it? Or, you know, if you're... If you're current... I don't know. If you're into actual space, it's like Curiosity in the Sky Crane, right? We're going to Sky Crane this thing onto the surface, near to a Keithane deposit. Ah, there we go. Now, that looks a whole lot better. So, yeah, um, we did a couple of passes around the surface. We decide uh, that we're aiming for that large crater, and more specifically, the canyon coming off of it. So we have the keythane detector running, and we're going to be listening out for when it goes from being a, a click, click, click to a beep, beep, a bonk, bonk, bonk. So nothing yet, and we, we're now flying over that cord, over that canyon. We've killed our velocity quite a lot, and we're just going to kind of hover vertical. We're going to basically slowly kill our velocity but uh, try and keep slipping sideways until we actually get a signal from the, the keythane detector, which is running. We're using the keythane detector on the, on the rover at this time. 
Ah, uh, there we go. So now we actually have a signal. This is time for us to kill our lateral velocity and put us right down. Looks like we're going to be right in the middle of that canyon, which is a rather photogenic place, I would say, to put uh, a moon base. So we're just going to kill all the lateral velocity. And you see I'm bringing up the Translatron, the Smart ASS, and the surface uh, information. Now, this is important because I do not have the docking ports on this mapped to an action group because that could lead to chaos. Um, basically, the idea is I'm going to fly this in and then I'm going to ask the autopilot to hold the attitude for me uh, so that I can turn the screen around and right-click on the docking port to detach it. I don't want to actually land. I want to hover just above the surface and drop the rover onto, the, onto it. And... I'm sure it's possible without MechJeb, but I'm trying to do a 100% reusable space program, and you know what? I don't think crashing things into the surface and breaking them counts for the reusable thing. So yeah, we're just we're just reducing the velocity down. I'm just punching in numbers into the, the vertical speed on the Translatron. It's just going to hold my attitude for me. Uh, altitude is coming down. That's 100 meters. And we're gonna hit minus one once we get below about you know 10 meters or so let's start looking for the the shadow on the ground here 40 meters 30 and now that's us down you can see the shadow just right below it's beautiful of course this would not be a valid landing spot for an apollo spacecraft because the sun illumination angle is too steep but uh, it works fine for us because we have all this fancy instrumentation. So once we get down really close, I'm going to tell it to hit zero meters per second and just hover. Yeah, that's as you see, it's just going to hover us above the surface. Time to undock. Beautiful. Now let's get... Oh, wait, no, no. Made a slight mistake there. Let's hope I don't cook the rover with my rocket engines. There, that's us. Now uh, let's just... We've got to get ourselves back into orbit. And uh, the, sp the space station, of course, is heading on off ahead of us. It'll have passed on. And we're just going to turn off all our stuff, turn off the actual ASAS, and start heading sideways with great velocity. There, there's the space station there. So we're going to aim for a slightly lower orbit, and hopefully we can actually just catch up with it just by flying lower than it. So we switch into map mode, set that up as our target. I'm just going to circularize it. Or I'm just doing a bunch of things manually here because, you know what? Uh, I'm bored. <laughs> I could, you, you know I can do this, right? I'm just, uh, I'm just using MechJeb to speed things along so you don't have to watch this entire thing. Uh, a little bit of flying there, a little bit of flying here. Coming in towards the Artemis station, it doesn't do docking for me, and to be quite honest, given what happened with Progress and Mir when they tried their automated docking, uh, I think uh, <laughs> it, uh, it fam famously a, a Progress shuttle once crashed into Mir and, and depressurized a whole section because the automated docking system broke. So I like to do docking manually. I'm sorry, I don't trust these other things, but that's fine. I'm pretty good at it. Anyway, we are going to rename this to Scraper because it's going to be scraping the surface for Keithane deposits and because that's what we call cars in Oakland that are all suspensioned up with the, the front up high and the, the rear down low so the back scrapes along. It's a whole culture thing here. <laughs> Not that I'm anything to do with it, but it's going to be running around the surface uh, Shooing off its wheels, looking for things to do. Let's get that communitron up so we can transmit our information back to Kerbin. Oh, look, we found Keithane! I mean, really, this is going to be driving around to other places, but it's going to start here and find a nice flat spot that we can stick, uh, start building a moon base. You know, that's the main thing. You want to have everything kind of flat. If it's too bumpy, then you, all your modules won't join together. But that's us, I think... We're ready to go. We shall be launching more stuff in future. But uh, until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.